We're good. We're Thank good. you, sir. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, and what a pleasure today has been and what a pleasure this um, process has been. Um, I have a few things on my mind. One is um, the this format where we're spending some time meditating uh, and then we're spending some time in questions and then the small groups has been very um, interesting and effective for me and has affected um, my regular yoga meditation practice and sort of my my day to day in a really interesting way. So thank you to everyone. And John, your guidance has been incredible and touching to me and your ability to answer people's questions uh, has been so exquisite that it's also been very meaningful. And I don't think I've been in a, in a small group where folks didn't comment similarly. So those are a few things I wanted to say. And then I was just commenting Thank you. to my wife who's sitting here, you were just answering the last question so beautifully. And I said to Sherry, I said, his answers are so good. And I don't, I don't say that about anybody. I always have, <laughs> I always have, uh, some criticism, but, uh, so, so that's helpful. My question, if I can articulate it is this idea of everything being in meditation of, uh, of everything that you've been talking about um, has helped shift my understanding of meditation. But the question is how this intersects with my personality. So when I'm in a, a meditative place, I quiet down, which is good. Uh, but then sometimes when my personality, for lack of a better term, is coming out, um, how these things fit together. So mm -hmm. let me state that one more way and then I'll, and then I'll listen. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm being, I don't want to overstate what I'm saying, but sometimes I feel like I'm being spiritual when I can be quiet. <laughs> um, but I know I'm a little bit off base because really what I'm doing is I'm suppressing myself. So it's, so it's not an act of kindness to myself. And I'm trying to understand how to not suppress myself and allow this, allow the moments to be there with, in my, just in my waking life and my regular interactions. Well, that's a beautiful, it's a beautiful question, Drew, and really says a lot about you that you're really marinating around that kind of uh, that kind of a uh, issue and insight. Um, my brief answer would be, don't worry about it. Don't give it too much thought but just keep attending to it as a kind of object of attention and meditation practice like and make room for whatever arises um a lot of this is as i'm hearing it from you is kind of conceptual and you know i've been emphasizing for 12 weeks that who we think we are is never who we really are it's always uh, who we really are so much bigger and very hard to put into words. So in a certain way, the more room you make for yourself to not be a conventional way, like I stay as far away from the word spiritual, for instance, as possible, because then we have some kind of whole idealized image of what a spiritual person would be. And it's like a kiss of death in a certain way, because it locks you into a prison of some kind or a belief system of some kind. You're locked in, you're locked in. I mean, it's uh, it's a prison. So this is about freedom. So it's not the freedom to do whatever the hell you th want to do, because that's just 
you know, ego pursuing itself and bothering people or making trouble. So it's not that kind of freedom, because I've been emphasizing who you think you are is not who you are. So to be aware of this sort of feeling tone of the personal pronouns, even if you don't, you know, open your mouth. Like what's the inhabited quality of the various kinds of circumstances you get into where you feel those kinds of energies and then listen very, very deeply to what, how you feel about it. And if it feels like it has integrity, then it's fine. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. But if it feels a little bit off or like you've outgrown that or there's some way in which uh, something else wants to emerge, then without pushing the river or pursuing anything, you know, uh, in particular, just let life be your teacher, which is what it is anyway, if you're willing to grok the lesson, so to speak. And then everybody you live with will help in that regard because they're continually interfacing with you. They're all your teachers too. Whether it's children, parents, partners, spouses, your friends. And uh, you know, who does who is Drew when all is said and done? And are you the habits that you've developed up to this point? including those social habits that might, you know, sort of be strong identifiers, but in some sense, limit, limiting, or grown or whatever. And then this just becomes a big adventure. And again, a love affair with. So if you give me one specific example, and it doesn't take too long because we're pushing into our dialogue time, maybe that would, we can make it more concrete. We lost you. There we are. Sorry about that. I muted myself again. That's a beautiful answer for me, uh, and I need to to uh, allow it to land a little bit. But some of it landed, and it was, uh, uh, you know, an example could just be in in work, in work situations where I'm trying to uh, assert assert my point of view. It's 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 in very it could be in very simple ways. But but ways for me where maybe I'm maybe it's a it's a it's a coping strategy that's not working for me anymore. So I'm being more assertive than is necessary. See, see, you know, you have so many different angles to approach this that no one is a bigger expert on you than you, and also your um, habits of mind that. Uh, you could outgrow like a snake outgrows its skin at a certain point. If it's no longer functioning, don't wait for other people to tell you that you're annoying or, you know, whatever. Uh, notice it and let it go, okay? And there'll be a new skin growing that might be, you know, that's what growing and learning and mat maturation and living into wisdom are really all about. And there's, as I've been emphasizing from the beginning, there's no one right way. So really, nobody can write a prescription for you about like, oh, if you're only, this is how you be a quote unquote spiritual person, which would be like, as I said, the kiss of death, but exactly the opposite. How do you just simply be you underneath your name, your age, your history, everything else, and let it be shared with the world in a way that feels, you know, uh, like um, authentic to you. And if it doesn't, then that's a barometer of like, fine tune it. Ah, wow, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.